doing? Good morning, good morning. I am so glad as always that you're taking this opportunity to tune in to Children's Ministry. I know that God has a word from you as always. And I pray that you're doing your memory verse or you're reading your, your memory verses every week. And on today, we're going to get started with another message from God. And I know you like it. And I know you see, I have something here. We all like to get what? Gifts, right? So we're going to talk about this gift that for everyone. Uh, so let's pray. Let's do what you do. Get your Bibles, get your tablets, get your phones, get whatever you have the word of God on. And let's get into an exciting word on today from the Lord for us. Let's do, pray as always. Father, we come just to thank you for this day, God. We thank you, God, as we embark upon the celebration of Jesus' birthday, God. We thank you all that you've given to us, Lord God. And even as we're studying and meditating upon your word this day, God, we pray that you reveal to us those things which you have us to know, God. Reveal to us through your word this morning, God those things that would lift us up, encourage us, and strengthen us, Father. In your son, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, faith kids, let's get into this word that God has for us on today. We're going to turn to Romans chapter 6. This is where our memory verse is, Romans chapter 6. So let's get there, Romans chapter 6, and we're going to read verse number 23. And in Romans 6, New Testament, I know you're there, right? In the New Testament. Of course, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it reads, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. That is an awesome scripture to meditate upon this week. He says that, the gift sin is death, right? But he has given us a, the gift of, of eternal life forever through his son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. So fake kids, this week, meditate upon that word. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak God's word through you and what he has and reveals to you in this memory verse this week. So on today, we're going to be talking about, you're probably going to know, we're going to be speaking on celebrating the gift, celebrating the gift. And we know we all like to get gifts, right? Whether it's our birthday and of course this time of Christmas time, we you know get gifts, but we're going to talk about the gift. We're going to be celebrating the gift. You're like, how can we celebrate a gift? When you rejoice, right? When you get gifts and receive gifts, I know you'll be like happy and rejoicing. So we're going to talk about celebrating the gift. So turn over in your Bible to the first book in the New Testament, Matthew. So let's go to Matthew chapter 2. So we're talking about celebrating the gift. Celebrating the gift. So in the scripture, we're going to read verses 1 through 12. So Jesus was born in Bethlehem Well, during the reign of King Herod about the time some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. So it says the wise men or the mad guys, who were they looking for? They were looking for who? Jesus. They were looking for Jesus. They say they saw the star and they were looking for the Jesus who was supposed to be the savior of the world. And why were they looking for him? It says that they wanted to worship him. They wanted to worship him, celebrate him, right? So they wanted to worship Jesus. Let's continue on. So King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this. And as everyone was in Jerusalem, he called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler would come from you who will be the shepherd for my people 
Israel. So then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. So, all right, so King Herod is like, okay, what is, where is this shepherd? He went to the, you know, the priest and the elders and like, what, where's this shepherd that's supposed to be this king that's supposed to be over you? What, so why was Herod looking too for Jesus? He also was looking for Jesus, but he was looking for the wrong reasons because he was jealous thinking, okay, there's going to be another king besides me. He was being selfish, thinking about his own self. Thinking about, well, if it's going to be another king, what about me? And he's not going to take my place and I'm here. So this is what he was thinking. Selfishly, right? What are we thinking when we're receiving gifts on Christmas time? Do we think, oh, okay, I can just get gifts. I know a lot of times we say this is the season that we give to others and we're giving and if we're giving to others. That is good. We are to give to others. But we're not just to give them to just at this time. God says we should be giving to others all the time, right? So... We don't want to get sidetracked on what the real thing of giving is about. It's about the gift that God has given us. So we should be celebrating that gift, which is Jesus Christ, that he's given us. So let's continue to read. So Heron was jealous and he wanted to find out where, the, where this king was because he wants to get rid of the king. He wants to kill Jesus because he wants to be the only one thinking about himself. Oh, I'm, if he's going to be king, then I won't be king. So he's worried about his own self. So then as we pick up in the scripture, then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I may go and worship him. But we know he was not trying to worship Jesus. After this interview, the wise men went their way and their star that they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. They entered the house and they saw the child. Oh, let, I skipped the verse. Verse 10. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. Let's stop right there for a minute. So the star was above where Jesus was. And it says that the wise men were filled with joy. That's like when you receive those gifts, you get so happy, you, you get filled with joy. So they were filled with joy. Why? Jesus. They were there, Jesus, and they were filled with joy. Then it says, they entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. In this story, it says they saw the child. I know a lot of times when we do Christmas plays and you read the story and we think that it all happened at the same time when Jesus was in the manger. No, it says that they went into the house and saw the child. So that means that Mary and Joseph were no longer in the born. Jesus was not in the manger and he was not a baby. So that was some time when Jesus was born and the time that the wise men got there. But when they came, they came and they saw the child. And what did they do? First, they were filled with joy. Then they bowed down and worshiped him. That's what we're to do. Worship him. And it goes on to say, as they worshiped him, let's keep reading. They opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And I know you're probably saying, Sister Andrew, what is gold, frankincense? I know gold. What's frankincense and myrrh? These were gifts that were only given to royalty, to deity, to, you know, kings. It wasn't gifts that normal little people would have, you know, but they were always for higher people. So they brought, because they were kings, they brought these gifts to Jesus. Gold, frankincense is like it says, it's like an incense that's the aroma that's that's when you burn it, it fills with this nice smell. And myrrh, it's like a it's in like an anointing oil. So they would have this anointing oil, and it only used it when you um, when someone died. They would put this anointing oil with all these fragrances, and then put the anointing oil on them. So they brought all of these gifts to Jesus, the King. Right? Can you just imagine they brought all of this because he was the King? So let's continue on. I said, and then when it was time to leave, they returned to their country by another route for God had warned them not to go back to Herod. So God had told them, now don't go back and tell Herod where Jesus is. 
where the baby, where the child is. So God has a plan. So think about it. The, let's go back to what the uh, wise men were doing. They said that they bow down and worship God, worship Jesus, gave him all of these gifts. What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to worship Jesus. How do, when we praise him, we're worshiping him. And then during this time that we're celebrating that the birth that he came to this earth. So we're supposed to be worshiping Jesus. We're supposed to give him offerings because they're giving him all of the gold. Yeah. When you have gold, you have a lot of money. That's like rich. So we're giving God Jesus offerings during this time, bringing our offerings to him, bringing all our gifts to him. How else can we celebrate this gift that God has given us. When we're praying, we can celebrate Jesus during that time. So as I have here, I have this gift for everyone. Everyone listening, faith kids, um, whoever else may be watching, we, we love to get gifts. And God has given us a gift, a gift that is, gives us eternal life. That means we, we have something we can't even imagine. We have eternal life. And how do we have this eternal life? Through his gift that he given us. It tells us in John 3, 16, you know the scriptures, faith kids, that God loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son. He gave us Jesus to die on the cross for all of our sins that we might have what? Eternal life. So let's look in the scripture. Go over to Isaiah in the Old Testament. We're going to go to Isaiah. It's after Proverbs, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastic, Song of Solomon. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 9. And I'm going to tell you about this gift that I have as I open this gift for you. That It's a gift. It says, let's see what our gift is. Our gift is... Jesus. It is Jesus. That is the gift that God has given us, the greatest gift ever. He's given us who? Jesus. And it says in the scriptures in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born. Jesus was born for us. A son is given. God loved us so much that he gave his son to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called. We are to call Jesus what? Wonderful, counselor, mighty God, prince of peace. That's worshiping him. That's celebrating him. That's what we're doing this season, this Christmas time. We're celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one who came here, gave up his life that we could have what? Eternal life. The gift that God has given us, the gift that above all gifts that we can receive. No matter what we think we might want, what toy that's out that you know you want, that gift that you're expecting for Christmas, God has given you the ultimate gift, his son, Jesus. We have the greatest gift ever, faith kids, and his son. How do we, and you know, how do we receive this gift? We just say, Father, I know your word tells us that if we confess with our mouth, and believe in our heart that God has raised Jesus from the grave, we shall be saved. And that's how we receive this awesome gift that God has for us. So faith kids, don't forget to do your memory verse this week in Romans. And also have a great, merry, merry celebration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's birthday. I will see you on next week. Bye-bye.